Hey ho, Lydia Dupri here, aka the Ho Mentor, and I mentor hoes. That's right, hoes, hoes. I don't know. Uh, I'm sitting in my car. It's one o'clock in the morning, and um, I was chilling, and um, I got a text message um, of a news story, and um, yeah, the the people who trafficked me are one of them is in jail, and um, the other two warrants for the arrest have been issued. And honestly, I, what? Like, uh, it's so crazy that it's all over. And I just realized like so many things. Like I, I made a, I was in a documentary for, about this in l last year. Sorry, I'm like, I feel like something happened to me mentally like during like since I got this news where like I'm trying to talk to you but I'm having so many flashbacks that it's very hard for me to like focus on speaking now because it's like I feel like I'm like going back to like you know like the 20 year old me I'm dealing with those people and I did this documentary this NBC documentary and like testifying against them and it was so scary afterwards like it wasn't scary during it because I was like uh, that's right that's why I said bitch and it's true because I <laughs> you know <laughs> but then after came the consequences and honestly I didn't think they would do anything because it's like obviously you're all guilty like you guys need to keep your mouth shut and that's not the case that's not what happened um, I know Karen and Dave, it's like scary saying their names, is Derek Hay, who owns LA Direct Models, who is my agent, um, for the movies, um, but also like, you know, pulled the strings on the back end, you know, with escorting and everything, and then Karen and Dave are like insane psychopaths, um, from their agency, TLC, The Luxury Companion. And, um, you know, Dave was, like, literally calling people, being like, tell me where she's at. I will pay you to to give up her location. And, you know, that's a scary thing when my phone is going off. And people being like, yo, someone just offered me money to, like, allow you to be pulled up on. Heads up. Uh, you know, like, that doesn't feel good. And it's like, damn, okay, I guess it's just not over yet. Like, even though I left a life, it's still not over. And it's one of the reasons I sold the dollhouse. I sold the dollhouse for many reasons. Um, it was hella haunted, the breakup. And um, this is something I didn't tell you guys because these people were looking for me. And I had dolls in the house. And um, I was using the house to shoot at the time as well and I'm just like one porn person you know one porn person they could just tell them oh yeah, yeah yeah she lives over there so I was like ah. here we go deuces and uh yeah it was, it was it was pretty swift if you recall I moved before the house actually sold because I needed to move right away and, um, I think, I think you can, I think in like some of the dollhouse episodes, you can see like the house is still like very much my house. And I was like, yeah, so I live over here now. That's why. Um, so that happened. And then like, my whole body feels weird right now. Like I just feel I feel like I'm on something, but I'm not. I just, I don't know what it is. It seems like a release. Um, I'm also tired. It is one o'clock in the morning. And, um, what, what it made me realize 
was that like I feel like I've been like re-traumatizing myself and let me explain having an agent and living in his house and then talking to your other agents and then just having that one agent have his people just bus you around from client to client so it was like Derek you know I hung out with I lived in Derek's house this was his bedroom this was my bedroom so I lived in Derek's house we shared the same freaking air every day and then he had drivers so his drivers would take me to a movie set I would shoot the movie and then I would go back to Derek's house and then Karen or Dave would call me and be like, okay, you have a job now. And then a driver would take me to that job and then take me back to Derek's house. And I was okay during all of that. Like, I didn't realize anything was bad until bad things started happening. But in the beginning, I was happy to be looked after and, you know, moved around from place to place. But it didn't teach me any independence. Um, you know, and ultimately that was isolating me to, to keep me well behaved. And I still perpetuate that on myself and I haven't realized it until like tonight and it just all kind of clicked in. You guys know I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. I, I go home and I stay, I sit my ass at home and then I go to work and I sit my ass at work and then I go back home. And then if I have to go in public... I have a chaperone, I have handlers. And um, that was like so deeply ingrained to me that like me being alone anywhere or me doing something with without me being like in a freaking holding tank is that triggers like, oh, danger to me. Like you don't have anyone to look after you. You don't have anyone to like put you back in your in your little corner. And I didn't really realize that until tonight. And it's like, sorry, I feel like I have a paper cut. And it's like, okay, well, my excuse is always like, well, I've been trafficked and um, I'm not safe. But really, I've been trafficked and I'm perpetuating those same limitations when it's a whole world out there and I don't have limitations. I don't have kids. I'm not married. Like, I own a company, sure, but, like, I can operate it from my cell phone if I wanted to. You know, like, I, I have employees that, that do the operations. Like, my job is to, is to like, do stuff from my phone, essentially. Like I show up to work because it helps me focus, and I like to see my staff every day. But, like, I could do anything that I want. But I've just never thought to do it. I mean, like, even being in L.A., like, when I got to L.A., like, I, uh, can I tell you, I have barely seen L.A. I've barely seen it. Because um, I got here to work. And I got put to work. And um, I think in the past, let's see, since I got into the adult industry at 19, so I'm 29, almost 30 now. So let's just say 10 years. I have been on vacation two times. I went to Hawaii once for a couple of days. And I went to Mexico on a cruise for three days. And that's it. It's the only two things I've done. Um, I went to Disney one time. I went to Universal Studios one time. Um, and I've worked in a lot of hotels. Um, and I've been to a lot of nice restaurants as well. Um, but again, most of that has been me working. I mean, I still go to the Beverly Hills Hotel because I am comfortable there because I've worked there. Uh, no shades of Beverly Hills Hotel. I love you guys. But I find, like, just seeing them in jail, like, knowing that they're in prison right now, it's like, I feel like that's the last people that had a hold on me, even though I don't interact with them. It was like that little fear in the back of my head, knowing like, hey, these people are looking for you. It really is truly not safe for you to go outside. And now I feel like, I feel like my cage doors have opened. And I'm just like,
You know what I'm saying? Like, you mean I could just step out? Like, that's... It was cold. It's cold. That's what it feels like. And it's crazy to me. And I was like, I was hanging out with someone while this was all happening. Because was literally at dinner. And I was like, oh my god, you would never believe this. And then we're chilling after that. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm just not okay. <sighs> like, I'm going to be okay. And I think I haven't been okay this whole time. In, in like, a, like a systematic way you know like like i'm high i'm high functioning within my restraints and i've built a life around being handled by people and being isolated from the world and i've, I've been lucky enough to be able to build companies around my trauma and i feel like now that these people are gonna be away that I don't have to adapt to my trauma. And I think I have a shot at like, like really living my life. <sighs> I think I can really live my life. You know, like I have like this dream of like, you know, like, being that person that is, like, in places outside. I know it sounds so stupid. But, like, I would love to just, you know, I don't know, like, I guess travel. I don't know. I, I haven't even thought about it that much. I think I need to start thinking about what I want to do. Because nobody is stopping me from doing anything with my body. And I've always been told what my body can do, where my body is allowed to be. And now my body is free. And there I am looking over my shoulder, waiting for someone to take me away again. But they're not. Nobody's coming for me. Nobody's going to hurt me. No one is going to put me in the car, drop me off at someone's house, come back an hour later and take my money. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. It won't happen. I'm in control of my body. I'm in control of my future. And I'll tell myself who I hang out with, where I go, and what I do 100% of the time. I do not need to ask permission to be anywhere. Wherever I am is exactly where I want to be. And I'm really, really going to embrace that. So, what should I do? Where should I go? I really, like, want to go get M&M's, to be honestly. To be honest. No. I see I've been eating too much. I need to stop. I just had an amazing dinner at this restaurant. It was so good. It was seafood. Um... We went to the Carbon Beach Club in Malibu. Mm, so good. We had like what feels like everything on the menu. It was so nice. But I ate like three times today. So enough. None of these M&Ms. It's a slippery slope pose. Okay, we need to stay focused. If anything, I need to be training my body to move about better in the world. I'm going to start going to the gym straight up. I'm so afraid of going to the gym. I don't know why. I guess I'm afraid of being vulnerable. But you know what? I'm going to go anyway. Because my body is going to be out in that world. And it belongs to nobody but me. And I'm going to use that shit. Mm. So.
that's what's up so Derek hey suck my dick dwight cunningham aka dave suck my dick and karen miss michian is your last name girl you knew exactly what it was you were doing to me you're a fellow woman you're supposed to be a hoe girl Whoa. Why is it always, like, more messed up, like, when a woman does it? Because it's, like, because you're supposed to know. Like, a woman's supposed to know better. You know? <sighs> Stupid. Whatever. She's never that cute, anyway. That's right, Karen! Not even that cute. Mmm. <laughs> After all these years, that's my comeback suck my dick and you're not even that cute yeah i think i need to work on that i guess there's a part of me that's still a little bit afraid well because Derek is not in jail yet and neither is karen but dwight aka davis and he's like the scariest one like he's literally pulled a gun on people before like he fired a gun at someone but there just wasn't a bullet in it um look at this cool ring i got it today Sorry, I'm really proud of it. I really like it. <laughs> um, anyway. So, my pimp is in jail. Uh, and then my other two pimps going to jail. Their oh, arrest warrants have been issued. I'm sure they're either going to end up in jail or Mexico. But either way, they will not be stopping for me along the way. You know, dude, sometimes you got to wait a long ass time for karma to make its rounds but can i say lol because this is happening in mercury and retrograde and it's like y'all deserve that so yeah karma dude it's real and i feel like all of my karma has added up and things are just opening beautifully for me like i just my life is so beautiful right now I wouldn't change anybody in my life. I wouldn't change anything in my life. I think the one thing that I want to change, I just freaking did and didn't even know it needed changing. And that is permission for me to operate anywhere in the world without fear. And giving myself permission to be there. Like, I always think, like, oh, I'm not supposed to be there. Like, everywhere. All places. Unless it is my home with all of the doors locked or my office with all of the doors locked I like right I'm sitting in my own freaking vehicle but because I'm outside I feel like I'm not supposed to be here I've been sitting here making this video for 18 minutes and this entire time I've like I've been like shuddering a little bit because I feel like I'm not supposed to be here but I am I want to start walking slower I'm going to start walking slower. I'm going to think of a place to be tomorrow. Let me know if you want to see me any places. Or like, you know, Lydia, I think you would really enjoy doing this type of thing. I want to live my life without it being rushed. Because I'm always rushing from location to location. And I realize I'm just living out my trauma. Being rushed from location to location. On play that little stream. All right. All right. I'm gonna go to bed. My pimp's in jail, ho. It's 2020. Kill your pimp vibes. <laughs> Jump your boyfriend. Kill your pimp. Love yourself. I'm out. <laughs>